everybody, it's Greg Luchak. Welcome to the Greg Luchak Show. This is like, I guess, my fourth episode. I'm just starting out in this new venture here doing the talk show. And so the episode four is uh, the reason why I'm doing this. So I'm going to explain a little bit about my history. The talking points of the show basically will be uh, my, my Christina story, which some of you may have already heard about that. Um, objectives, uh, a little bit about my history and future shows. So uh, why am I doing this? Uh, well, to begin with, let's talk a little bit about my wife's situation. My wife uh, has a lot of health issues. Over the years, she was able to handle it fairly well, but a few years back, she ran into some difficulty. She ended up having a major event that changed both our lives dramatically. Uh, she requires a full-time caregiver, which looks like I'm gonna have to become that person which is why I'm going to do the show because I have to transfer what I do as a, as a living as a contractor. I'm going to take all that knowledge that I've learned over the past 40 years and put it into the show. This way I'll be able to work from home. I'll be able to provide her, her you know, some care at home while I'm working at home. You know, I'll be out and about a little bit here and there, but for the most part, I have to figure out how I can do this from home and, and change the way I make money. Uh, so I'm limited to the job sites that normally as a contractor that I would be on. Some of you who know me realize, you know, I've been a renovator for a large part of my life. And I'm now going into a new direction. Uh, with the show, what I want to be able to do is uh, help new entrepreneurs. I want to showcase uh, other people's renovations, people who are flipping property, uh, entrepreneurs who are starting new businesses. I want to invite you onto my show. We can talk about what you're doing and give you a new avenue uh, to explore. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about my history. Uh, growing up, I was, uh, you know, basically I grew up watching my dad build our, our cottage and renovate our house, and he was quite the handyman. And I, I guess that got ingrained in me because I, growing up, I was the kid who always built all the tree forts at the cottage. You know, I, all us kids at the cottage, we would be helping our neighbors, we'd be building decks, you know, doing the roofing, doing landscape, always doing something. As you all know, a lot of you, if you have cottages, you're always, it's a project that never ends, right? You're always doing something. Well, as kids, we were always helping our neighbors and our, and our own parents do stuff around the cottage. So I got into this building thing that kind of got ingrained in me. Uh, by the time I was nine, I could plumb the cottage. I could install all the, the propane, all that kind of thing. So I, I learned early how to use my hands and how to construct and how to build stuff, which is why eventually I created a construction company. But by the time I was 12, um, we had a neighbor uh, who, uh, who owned a florist company, you know, a florist shop. And when I was like, actually when I was nine, 10 years old, during busy seasons like Christmas and uh, Easter, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, those special event days, He'd hire me, usually it's on a Saturday, and I'd be a jumper in the truck. And you know, my, the one thing my parents did is they instilled a good work ethic in me at a very young age. So you know, I was always doing something in the background of spare time. But at the floor shop, I started doing that. But by, by the time I was 12, they, they got me to start selling flowers in the mall for them. And that's where I kind of started developing my entrepreneurial spirit. They'd give me a cart full of flowers. I'd go to the other end of the mall well, actually poinsettias and I, I parked it right near the beer store <laughs> kind of not sure if I planned that I just it just happened the way it worked out but I would sell out the cart every day that I was doing that and usually that you know like I said the busy season so I started de developing this entrepreneurial spirit doing stuff like that during my early teens I was also in uh, I was artistic I was able to draw do pen and inks do watercolors paintings I kind of developed that talent my mother recognized that, kind of pushed me in that direction a little bit. And I started doing stuff, but then people started asking me to do stuff for them. And I ended up in my early teens, and that actually went into my into my 20s, where I do commission work. I would do a you know, commission pen and ink or a watercolor or something like that. Could have been for a wedding, for a gift, for something. And on, on occasion, I would sell some of my stuff. So I more gained entrepreneurial, developing some talent where I could sell my service. Now, by the time I was 18, I uh, started working for a moving company. 
And uh, what happened with that is that uh, on weekends, because I have my a truck driver, I got my license as a truck driver, the company would give me the truck to do mo local moves on the weekend. And I would, I would basically run the job. I'd hire my friends to work for me. And I would get, I would get, basically I'd pay a small percentage to them for the use of the truck, but I would get the rest of the money. And I would hire my friends to work for me. Did that on weekends, did that for a few years. Uh, by the time I was 21, and by this time I'm gone from home, I actually moved away, was working in the mining industry for, for a little bit. Uh, but while I was doing that, I developed a keen interest in real estate. I started doing taking home study courses and reading books and traveling around and looking at property. So I, I did that for a number for a few years till eventually when I was 25, I bought my first 12 unit apartment building. And I've bought in a few properties over the years, but you know, in a future show, we'll kind of we'll expose we'll do a little expose on some of the properties that I purchased over the years and some of the things I did. But my first real big investment was when I was 25, 26 years old, and I bought an apartment building, 12 unit. Um, and then at 26, I started, I, I created a construction company, and I kind of took off with that for quite a few years. I did other things in between, like, you know, in, in, there were a few years where it was pretty lean, I got a job, did my construction business on the side, but I've been renovating properties, I can almost say all my life, as a business since my early 20s. So I've got quite a bit of experience in that and I want to bring that and showcase that into this show, kind of, you know, give you some of my experience. I've created a number of different products. Uh, well, I've written a book. You know, you'll see a little blurb, I'm sure you may have already seen it, where I wrote a book called The Wealth Principle, where I talk about being an entrepreneur, how to unleash the entrepreneur spirit within you. So I wrote that book. I also wrote a book, which basically is a bunch of chapters. I call it a bunch of mini books about real estate invest investing. So, you know, it's kind of my experience on investing in real estate from a, and, and from a contractor's point of view. So I can share all these ideas with you. I can show you how you can make money as a contractor. Also, another series that I'm trying to develop called The Wealthy Renovator. You may have seen that on some of my websites and other uh, little videos that I've done or in the backdrop, sometimes you'll see an image or a picture that I've posted somewhere on my social media. You know, kind of pre-promoting the Wealthy Renovator series because becoming wealthy today, it's great if you have a job and I have nothing wrong with people who have a job. I've had jobs over the years, but being one source of income is proving to be a source that doesn't work very well anymore. And I talk about that in my book where you need to learn how to be entrepreneurial. So the Greg Luchak Show is all going to be about being an entrepreneur, showcasing other people, uh, what they're doing to start a business, what they're doing in real estate, what they're doing to renovate properties. We'll talk, we'll bounce ideas back and forth. You know, I'll give you some of my experience. I hope you will find that it's all very uh, instructional and we'll try and make it fun at the same time. Uh, you know, if, you like, if you're a big proponent or like to watch uh, HGTV, like I watch a lot of those shows, you know, this, my show is not going to be quite like an HGTV show. Uh, I'm going to be talking about my own personal experience and mixing that in with other people's experience. And I hope you enjoy it. So this next segment that's coming up in the show, we'll take a brief break. Um, we're going to be showing or we'll highlight uh, a few of the jobs and properties and real estate that I purchased or worked on over you know a, a very vast period of time. So we hope that, uh, or at least I hope that uh, you you understand the reason why I'm doing this. Again, I'm gonna do a little promo here about my wife's condition. I actually created a GoFundMe on her behalf because uh, she needs a lot of things that aren't covered by insurance or covered by our healthcare system. Our healthcare system has a lot of cracks in it. She's fallen into the, some of these cracks. So I hope you take a, a moment of your time, check out the GoFundMe for my wife, uh, that we're looking to raise some funding to pay for some of her things that are a little bit beyond our means at the moment. So we'll start out with a little bit of the history. Uh, here's a picture of the uh, the first apartment building I bought. And this here is uh, the first full renovation I did back in 1986. It was like the before and after picture for Jim Craig. He was a local architect. And here's a number of houses that I framed 
over a period of time in the late 80s. There's a custom home I built in 2008 for a client. In uh, 2009, uh, it's like a hundred year old house uh, near the old Ottawa South area of Ottawa, where the, uh, the owner of the property had purchased this property and it was from an estate sale. It had been left abandoned and uh, there had been a lot of water damage because the, the heat was shut off, all the pipes burst. So he essentially had to uh, raise the house, put a new foundation, but in that process he decided to tear off the front porch, build an addition. So we we handled building the addition and some of the so some of the demo of that, and then we re basically reframed the interior of the house and uh, put on the addition. We built a brand new porch. Uh, did all the insulation, drywall, finished carpentry, all the doors. So it was a complete reno that uh, he had planned to flip. Uh, he ended up holding the property for a short bit and rented it out because it was uh, that time in the market, uh, it was a higher end property that would have taken quite a while to sell, probably more than a year because it was uh, an expensive. To give you an idea, that market was, uh, you know, in the five, six, low 700 range and he needed to get in the high 700 range 700,000 so I think he had his original asking price was like 750 780,000 he opted to rent for a few years let the market catch up and this is a flip that I did uh, a residence that we actually lived in it was a long flip of my own and this is the uh, the custom gourmet kitchen I call it that, that we put in we ended up, what I did is I put an extension on the back of the house to make the kitchen bigger. So the kitchen's roughly about 10 by 20. It's a fairly big kitchen, nice long island in the middle, all new cupboards, a coffered ceiling. We renovated pretty much the whole house, uh, all new flooring, uh, new uh, interior doors, new trim, all new paint, of course. Uh, we had put in a new furnace. We had renovated the basement. Uh, what else did we do there? All new windows. But again, when we did that flip, wrong time in the market, it took a little while to sell because it was a, essentially a buyer's market. And, uh, but we ended up, that's a, plot, a property flip that we did. And we can go into that in some detail, maybe in another show. And then I spent, uh, over the years, I've done a lot of work for other developers who, uh, who basically uh, they buy properties and they renovate uh, to upgrade the uh, the units so that they can get a better rent after the tenant has left. Lots of buildings are sold, and the market the market or the rents are not at market. So I have I have a few clients, uh, one in particular where I do uh, quite a few renovations. I think I've renovated over 200, 250 units for this company. You know, going in whether it's a townhouse, garden home, or an apartment, and we go in and we gut the kitchens, new flooring, new kitchens, new bathrooms new doors, depending on the unit and the location, some of that workload differs. So I've done a lot of apartment unit renovations for, for developers and and uh, property managers. And this here is a, uh, a, a kitchen uh, house renovation that we did for, uh, for a client of mine whose intention was to flip the property. And what we did, this is a, essentially, it was very close to a 100 year old, semi detached house where all the rooms are what you would say compartmentalized. So it'd be like the living room, dining room, kitchen. Everything had was boxed in, had doors to everything. So what we did is we opened it up. And you can see where we, we took out the wall between the kitchen and the dining room. There was also a section where there was what was called a butler's pantry. We split that in half, created a powder room. So this is a shot of the gourmet or the, uh, the custom kitchen dining area. Uh, it turned out very nice. We also uh, renovated the uh, the bathroom upstairs, and the uh, the owner of the property eventually sold. Did very well on the flip of that property. This is a uh, a three bedroom apartment condominium condo that we did for a client. That uh, he bought this, got it at a good price. We went in, we basically gutted the entire entire unit. We call I call it the smoked out condo. Now I've actually done and there's like a good 20 minute video in my little repertoire of videos that I did, I call it the smoked out condo. If you want to actually see what we did there, you can uh, have a look at it. Now this shot here, this is a long flip reno that we did. Uh, it's actually for a client. And we went in and we, again, it was uh, 
This was a garden home where the uh, game rooms were compartmentalized, where you had like a, a dining, kitchen, living area. And we opened it right up. Now you can see where there's post We had to leave some structure for support for the second floor. So all we did was carve out basically the, the interior of the walls to open up, give that open concept. And uh, this was, again, he was going to hold on to this for a year. Uh, we did the, uh, the kitchen, we did the basement, uh, all, and we painted everything, opened it up, and he was going to do a few things on his own, the backsplash, and a few things. But his intention was to live in it for a year and then flip the property. So I call these long flip rentals. Okay, folks, we're kind of winding down the show now. We're getting to the end of it here. I'm going to talk about uh, my next upcoming videos, uh, the showcase of who we're going to be doing next. My next video, uh, we're going to dig into a business. It's called Unique Design Effects with Barb Armstrong Leahy. She's an exciting artist doing her own thing. I'm looking forward to go out and meeting her and discussing her business and what she's doing. And we'll bring that to you. And following that, uh, my first multi-unit, How I Did It. That'll be another upcoming video. So in closing, I just want to kind of backtrack a little bit. You may have noticed that I had started a GoFundMe for my wife, and why would I do that? I, I'm an author, successful business, uh, you know, an investor in the past. But I have to tell you, like, unlike a lot of people, I've made mistakes. Uh, I, I made a few critical mistakes. Like a lot of Canadians, a lot of North Americans, I allowed myself to get too far overextended in the middle of a recession, and that kind of wiped me out. CRA took notice, I had no help from the banks because that's what happens when you're a self-employed person. And I basically had to start over because I lost everything about five years ago. So that's the purpose of the GoFundMe because I don't have a pool of cash that I could just throw out there. But I'm like, like a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners, I'm not a quitter. I get up, I pick myself up and I keep going. So uh, that's what I'm doing and then now I'm taking a new direction. Hope I get your support, there'll be more to come on you know, you'll learn by things that I've done that were successful, learn by things that where I've made mistakes that will hopefully will help you stay successful. So as always, you have a great day and you keep crushing it.